The news broke over the weekend that the Michigan State Board of Trustees was negotiating the contract of MSU President Samuel Stanley. Negotiations that could pave the way for his departure. The board is reportedly upset about his handling of a situation with the dean of the business school. Today at Speedway's Across Lansing, a gallon of regular unleaded gas hit $5. And gas experts say there's no relief in sight. Six News reporter Sarah Elsha is here for you now live in Lansing. A West Michigan jury has found Adam Fox and Barry Croft Jr. guilty for charges stemming from that 2020 plan to kidnap Governor Gretchen Whitmer. We have breaking news as the Michigan Supreme Court made two big decisions just in the last hour. That's right. They decided that two ballot initiatives, one that would enshrine reproductive rights and another that would make it easier for people to vote, will be on the ballot. The Michigan Board of Canvassers had blocked both those initiatives in a partisan split. Sanchez is here for you tonight. He has a live look at how traffic is shaping up. This Sunday, will mark the 21st anniversary of the attacks on September 11th, a day this country will never forget. And as 6 News reporter Luke Snyder tells us, one firefighter from Jackson is making sure people remember all who were lost on that tragic day. And the biggest question on the ballot is who Republicans will choose to run against incumbent governor, Democrat Gretchen Whitmer. This old Tom Lansing is the place to be. The Michigan Blues Fest is this weekend and the fun starts tonight. Shamir Owens is here for you now live from Lansing's Old Town. And I know I said six tips, Siobhan. This is my unofficial seventh tip though. <laughs> okay. Don't shop when you're hungry, right? Yeah. It can't just be me because when I'm hungry and going through the grocery store, it's a whole lot easier to be like, that looks good, that mm -hmm. looks good, and then the it all snack ends. aisle glows like exactly. when you're hungry, you yes. know? So eat and then shop. We're raising money for Women Working Wonders which is part of the Sparrow Foundation and it supports women's health here in mid-Michigan. So Jorma's part of the big show tonight and I know your children are here. Tell us what you'll be doing. Lauren, are we really talking Halloween? Oh, we are, Siobhan. It sounds too early, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. I totally agree. However, if you are a huge Halloween fan and we know there are a lot of people who are out there, more than 80% of schools have seen budget cuts across the country and it often puts programs like art and dance on the chopping block. But a Six News reporter, Luke Snyder, tells us us, one group in Jackson is working to help fill in the gaps and help kids tap into creativity in a new space. More than 34 million people are expected to hit the roads. If you're one of them, though, it should come as no surprise, really, that high gas prices will steal a lot of money out of your pockets. In fact, take a look at this. This is according to AAA. So the average price for gas across the nation this year is $4.60 a gallon. That's compared to $3.04 last year. And in 2020, the average was $1.87 a gallon. Speaking of weather, my favorite Dapper Dad is here with me. Well, Andre's here now with sports, and the MSU hockey season is quickly approaching. So that our community can be stronger. So all around, a great event, fun for everybody, accessible to everybody this year. And if you didn't register ahead of time, you can still do that today at Mon Ice Arena. And the weather is fantastic. Fantastic. So come on out down to campus in East Lansing. As much as we want to push it off, as much as I want to push it off, fall is just knocking on our door, isn't it? Oh, no. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. You can see it in the weather pattern yeah. for sure. I was looking after another six plus days. Oh, no. It's going to warm up. Oh, good. All right. You went and the other way on me, Jim. It's like Mother Nature is doing the pumpkin spice debate. Should it be fall? Should we stay in summer? You know, some people are ready to dive right I mean, in. I have a hard time making up my mind, too. Let's go back to summer. Yeah, let's go fall. Back I will, and forth. You know me. I will hold on to summer as long as it will stay. I do know that about you. <laughs> Thanks for watching 6 News at 5. 6 News at 530 is next, and we'll see you again for 6 News at 6. Who is with you at Dapper Dad's 2022? for this Dapper Dads event and many of you probably already know who's with me. None other than our Jorma Duran, right? He's been doing crazy things all summer to get you to vote all for summer, him for tonight, right? You know, I've been doing crazy things for probably too long. Yes, your entire life. We know that. But to get votes for this, it was just the summer. We're raising money for Women Working Wonders, which is part of the Sparrow Foundation and it supports women's health here in mid-Michigan. So Jorma's part of the big show tonight and I know your children are here. Tell us what you'll be doing or give us a peek. I'll give you a little bit of peek. So we're all, all the dads are supposed to do like a skit and I've seen some other kind of routines. Well, I've come up with a routine. Actually, you're in it. Oh no. You're kind of we'll in it. We'll have to see. Yeah, she's kind of in it. She doesn't know that she's in it, but she is kind of in it. Um, and so the skit, I'm trying to be funny. I'm trying to garner some votes. I'm trying to get people to vote for me. So I got my kids involved. So I'm going to do a Facebook Live. Hopefully you go on my Facebook. You can watch it also in the morning as well. Okay. All right. They're wrapped.
They're, they're wrapping us, Jorma, okay? And if you want to see this, I'm sure Jorma will show it to you tomorrow morning, right. this whole act. And David Young and Elizabeth were here last year, so it's going to be a tough act to follow. We'll see what you got. I know. I saw their act last year. It was awesome. Uh, I don't know if I could beat David. I'm going to do my best. All right. We'll see. I'll be the judge of that. <laughs> For now, we're live in downtown Lansing. We'll send it back to you guys. About ways to save money at the grocery store. Yeah, Siobhan, we've all noticed it. The grocery prices are just through the roof, it seems. I'm sure you're feeling it with your family. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling it with mine. Sherry Jones and I were just talking about how much we're spending at the grocery <laughs> store last night. In fact, the average cost of groceries a month for a family of four right now is $864. Wow. So tonight I'm here for you with six tips to help us all save some money as we shop these post-pandemic supply chain affected inflated prices. <laughs> so tip number one is redefine dinner. What does that mean? In a word, it means keep it simple. You don't need to make a feast every night. Your family can eat sandwiches or a big salad a few times a week. And kids think it's fun to eat pancakes for dinner, right? <laughs> so take advantage of that. Plus eggs are cheap. So breakfast for dinner it is. Yeah. Now, tip two is raid your pantry. See what kind of a meal you can throw together with the ingredients that you already have. You might still need to buy a few things, but you'll still save overall. Next is think before you buy in bulk. Buying in bulk is great, right, when it actually saves you money. You want to be sure to compare the price per unit or ounce for the items that you're buying. And don't buy perishable stuff if you won't use it all before it expires. You should also know when to shop. Timing really is key. Many experts, in fact, say it's cheaper to do your shopping on Wednesdays because grocery stores restock their shelves midweek and then mark down what they didn't sell from the week before. Okay, next one is a good one. Make a plan and stick to that list. Now do this before you leave the house, and when you get to the store, this is the tricky part, you actually have to stick to the list. This sixth tip, though, will help you do that. Order curbside pickup. It's a lot easier to avoid those temptations when you aren't actually going in the store yourself. And I know I said six tips, Siobhan. This is my unofficial seventh tip, though. <laughs> okay. Don't shop when you're hungry, right? Yeah. It can't just be me because when I'm hungry and going through the grocery store, it's a whole lot easier to be like, that looks good, that looks good, and then the it all The snack aisle up. glows like exactly. when you're hungry, you know? Yes. So eat and then shop. Good stuff, Lauren. There you go. Breakfast for dinner, too. I like yes. that. Yes. Nice to have you back. Well, it's all thanks, Lauren. And you're going to be back coming up in about eight minutes or so for six news at six. What's coming up this evening? Uh, we have a lot, Siobhan. Leaders from around the the world, uh, including here in Michigan, are certainly responding to this Russian invasion of Ukraine. We'll tell you what they're saying. Continue our coverage on that. And soon the cost of your prescription drugs could be going down. Plus, some young heroes helped save their bus driver. Looking forward to that story. All that. Thank you, Lauren. And Hi, Siobhan. We are currently on our last stop with the vice president today at a rally here in Holland. It just wrapped up moments ago. In fact, the vice president just left the stage. I can still see his tour bus out front here before he even heads to the airport. Several hundred people gathered to hear the vice president speak today and as I said this is the last stop on a tour across mid-Michigan which we were on and a highlight of that tour was our opportunity to speak with the vice president one-on-one -on -one. we did that on his tour bus as we actually traveled in his motorcade across West Michigan today I had the opportunity to speak with the vice president about a number of topics one of those though being Michigan's role in this upcoming election he says he's confident that he and President Trump will win the state as they did in 2016 and we can also expect to see many visits from the vice president and president in the year ahead. He says that will include the capital city and mid-Michigan area. Now we also talked about that so-called silent majority. That was the term that was coined after the unexpected win in 2016. This is what he had to say about that. Do you think that silent majority is still out there? I, I, I really do. But they're not as silent as you might think. I mean, I, I'll never forget uh, the night before the election here in Michigan. The clock ticked past midnight. We were in Grand Rapids. The president and I both were. He arrived about 12.30, a half hour into election day itself. And there were tens of thousands of people that stayed up late into the night to hear him present that. The enthusiasm was palpable. And when he left the stage at 1.30 in the morning, I'll never forget, Lauren, he walked up to me backstage as the crowd was roaring in the middle of the night in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and he said, Mike, I don't know about you, but that doesn't look like second place to me. 
spoke with the vice president, of course, about the impeachment inquiry, and we also talked about the president's antics on Twitter. I do have a lot more to share with you from that one-on-one -on -one sit down with the vice president, and I will do that tonight on 6 News at 11. But I want to talk a little bit more about this rally itself that we're at in uh, downtown Holland right now. Um, it was the main event of the vice president's tour today. He took the stage in front of a couple hundred people here who lined up early to get in to be able to see him. He did not talk a lot about the controversial topics. He spent a lot of time talking about the successes that he and the president have had these last four years in office. He highlighted the economy, support for troops. But when he did speak of the inquiry, it was to talk negatively about it. He said it was a sham, saying Democrats should be ashamed of themselves and that it's time to get back to work in Washington. Of course, his purpose here at the rally is to motivate his, ba motivate his base here in West Michigan. Getting out the vote will be key for both campaigns, the Republicans and Democrats, as we head into 2020. But one thing that was certainly clear here today in West Michigan is that Michigan has certainly emerged as a battleground state, and this next year ahead will be a fun one. I was able to travel in the motorcade today and got an exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview with Vice President Pence. We spoke about a number of things, but on this big day in Washington, we mainly focused on the impeachment proceedings before Congress. Strong words today from Vice President Mike Pence on the impeachment proceedings in D.C. What was happening in Washington, D.C. is a disgrace. For the second time in two weeks, the vice president sat down for an exclusive interview with Six News on what could be a historic day in Washington. As the vote goes through the Congress today, we expect these articles of impeachment will pass. But the vice president says that passage will fall solely along party lines. Uh, the first truly partisan impeachment in American history is essentially an attempt to overturn the results of the 2016 election. They're essentially saying to the people of Michigan and America that they know better. But even as impeachment in the House looks likely, the vice president says he's confident this movement will end in the Senate early next year and believes that President Donald Trump will still be securely in office. If this matter makes it to the Senate, uh, we expect them to be able to deal with it fairly quickly, um, dispatch this uh, impeachment effort, this partisan impeachment effort, and get back to the business of the American people. Well, what an experience for you to travel with the vice president today. It really is an exciting thing to be a part of, to get a behind the scenes look at the process and how the Secret Service works and all that goes into having a vice president or a president come to town. And as we said, this is actually the second time in just two weeks that I was able to travel with the vice president and speak with him. And we did cover other topics today as well. And Michigan's role, of course, in the 2020 election is something else that we touched on and we'll share with you tonight uh, what the vice president had to say about that on 6 News at 11.